Thank you, Susan. Thank you. And um, thank you to the organizer of the session for making this quite a, quite a friendly place to talk about a very difficult topic for me personally. So um, uh, I, I do study the Neolithic of Bulgaria, which is something you don't hear very often nowadays mm -hmm. in the UK, I'm afraid. It's something very, very rare, and I'm quite aware of it uh, most of the time when I do my research. And um, I wanted to, and I've been having this type of um, research angst about the complete uh, incohesiveness between approaches in the UK to material data and then approaches in Bulgaria to the same data. So really, this talk is um, a bit of an insight into trying, me personally, trying to reconcile those, those differences that I've had. And realistically, if someone had told me three years ago, oh, by the way, you're going to be doing this paper and talking about culture history at TAG, I'd say, no, that's <laughs> not, it's not what I would do at all. Because I, myself, was very much a naysayer when I first started working with Bulgarian archaeology and looking at their cultural history approach and their relative chronology. So, um, um, yeah, so on that note, um, very recently, about four weeks ago, I ended up at this doctoral conference in Bulgaria and I was presenting my own research um, and really I wanted to go to compare notes uh, with my fellow Bulgarian counterparts and to um, I don't know, to check if my biases were right. So before going, I was thinking, there's no way what's coming out of the Bulgarian pool of research as, as published material is, you know, maybe it hasn't caught up yet with what people are thinking now. Maybe there's this new strain of re reinvigorated type of other thinking coming in, maybe trickling down from the West in different type of texts. Um, as I had slight suspicions, I was completely wrong, to be honest with you. Um, not only had this westernized spirit that all of us in this room have as attitude towards archaeology not trickled down to uh, Bulgarian researchers, they seem to be almost uh, non-responsive to it in some very odd way. Uh, and what I want to do today is maybe, um, first of all, really let you know that I don't think that Bulgarians will ever um, think that they need to catch up with us in any way. And really, it's such an, such an arrogant way to go into someone else's research tradition and expect that they will just do things as you do them, you know, 50 years down the line. So I want you all to go into go into further into this presentation with that mindset um, in mind. So the purpose of this talk is twofold. It's not simply to express my concern about the lack of uh, aspiration toward establishment of absolute chronologies uh, in Bulgarian for history, but also it's to analyze why is it that we simply cannot discard decades of Bulgarian research in that way. So. Um, <laughs> Let me start about telling you a fun story about how Bulgarians uh, make sense of their material currently. So this is something I don't think many of you have ever seen Bulgarian relative chronologies. Maybe some of you have, if you had a brush up with Balkan prehistory in some way or another. So um, yeah, we're very much still in the era of looking at different sites. Um, talking of them as cultures and then trying to make sense of how they fit together uh, in, in a very flat perception of time, okay? So, um, the extent of relative Bulgarian Neolithic chronologies is truly astounding once you get deep into it. So, um, I study the, um, the southwest of the country and I study a particular uh, river valley that flows flows through the country, the Struma, and goes into the Greece and becomes the, the Strumon River. And uh, really, once I started going into uh, the relative chronologies of the region, and that was maybe about two years ago, this angst started building up in me, which really culminated in, in the need for this talk today. So um, 
that's just a brief example from the research I've conducted so far of, of what really the, the extent of uh, relative chronologies is in Bulgaria currently. Um, but there's this other type of, and there's something that um, is very specific for Bulgarian relative, uh, relative dating, dating. Um, and it's synchroni synchronization of settlement. So if a settlement with its material doesn't quite subscribe to the one culture that people expect it to within the region, that settlement is indeed, indeed um, ascribed to the same culture, but it's given an ever so slightly different name. So it just becomes the settlement plus the culture name at the end. So then people find very interesting similarities between very uh, limited numbers of pots and they say, oh, and I'm not joking about any of this, it's very much what the practice is really. Oh, this pot looks like this pot here. I think those two are synchronous and that's it. And really, it's a very counterintuitive thing to, to um, accept and to think because my initial thoughts about this was, <coughs> I just don't want to read any more of these things because I think they're just wrong. And that really is the initial reaction of someone with a background in, um, in British education has towards archaeology when you go into the region. So um, the next step, which, um, um, and then you can see of wonderfully just kind of having these different phases, you know, it's something that we don't really see very often anymore. And I think it's a, such a big difference to, from talking about absolute dates and talking about certain days in that way, if, if so an ant talk, that there's, there's no dates here. People don't really seem to know, uh, to want to know the dates. It's all about really a different type of attitude towards, um, towards the material and towards archaeology. And uh, oh, this is a wonderful, um, this is from a textbook on Bulgarian prehistory that's still being taught in Bulgarian, um, in Bulgarian universities. And I can tell you very easily, um, this is a complex, this is a block, this is a culture, and it's really about how different settlements fit into big blocks of the same culture materially. So the next step of my talk is, and it is subconsciously very counterintuitive, probably to all of you in this room, is not to criticize this approach. Okay, I'm not. I'm. I'm done with being negative about this. <laughs> I've promised myself mostly. Um, I have, over the years working with Bulgarian archaeology, taught myself to resist the impulse to simply deny the results of synchronized relative chronology. The simple reality of the present Bulgarian research, Bulgarian research, does not entail a moving away from relative chronology. Some very few researchers have attempted uh, using absolute, absolute dating um, and getting um, radiocarbon dates together. Um, this is just the latest example from a site in the northwest of Bulgaria. But what happens is um, you, get these, you get these samples and you just have, you just have um, very generic descriptions of context and sample materials. So I've seen a lot of radiocarbon dates with the sample just being described as charcoal. There's no, there's no explanation as to what it is or where it's come from or how it might be. There, so really, it's quite, it's quite a sparse thing. And Bulgarian researchers, uh, keep in mind, tend to keep their research quite close to heart. So even though something is published, they like to put in as and a minuscule amount of material in there, so then they remain kind of uh, in, uh, in, in power over their research field, which is quite, quite typical of a very strongly regionalized uh, tradition of research in Bulgaria. So um, the data from many of the most complete research projects often does not provide enough detail on excavation context uh, for successful radiocarbon dating. Um, because the value, merit, and method of radiocarbon dating and sampling is not embedded in the Bulgarian university curriculum in the same way that is in the UK, most researchers don't have the radiocarbon dating savvy that British archaeology really prides itself with. Um, and um, whenever absolute dating is performed, um, 
in the area I'm researching in my thesis as well, it is done so because of joint projects with uh, foreign institutions where funding actually is enough. Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you away from really um, awkwardly uh, presented radiocarbon data and talk a bit about this um, what's been happening for the past ten years with this river that I'm studying, and that's something that's been happening during the construction of a highway is uh, the revealing of an insanely huge amount of Neolithic sites in this not, not, not too big river valley. The whole river is about, in Bulgaria, is about 173 kilometers. So it's not, it's not a massive amount of space, but the number of Neolithic sites discovered on it is truly astounding. So for the past 10 years, um, this um, this site has been, uh, the whole of the river um, has been worked on. Um, and um, what's been happening is research has been stopped, maybe one or, um, not research, research hasn't been, well, it has, but uh, construction work has been stopped one or two times. And this particular site that I'm presenting here is um, one I went to visit in the spring of 2016. I believe, and it's um, actually, so you can see that it's covered, so the covered area is actually a very tiny strip of the site that's been completely preserved, uh, and it's been completely covered, and then this huge wall was built, and this cost a few million, few million euro to the government to do this, uh, and it's probably the, the only example of the site being preserved, but because it was such a, um, such an incredible, not published of course, they were maybe 20 years away from the publication of that site, uh, but I've, I've been hearing from people excavating there that what they've been finding is, but you would hear that from anyone really, uh, that you know it's uh, defying the, 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 the current order of events. So um, funding is what I'm going to be talking about now of course, because that's the other big issue when it comes to um, a move away from something and a move towards something else, particularly talking about the creation of absolute absolute chronologies. So you might shrug off this saying, oh, you know, there's funding problems everywhere. Look at the state of funding in, in, in British archaeology currently. Of course you have problems with, with money. You know, where, where is it? But I think you, you can't really brace the extent to which this is a problem in Bulgaria. And this is something of a bit of a sensitive topic as well. And maybe I, I do have the, um, the almost subconscious understanding of it because I'm a Bulgarian myself and I, and I can see where people come from, is that um, in many ways, um, Bulgaria is one of the worst of countries in the European Union currently, archaeology-wise probably so as well. Um, and that is um, for a few different reasons that I want to discuss with you today. But, um, you know, the reality is that as archaeologists, we should keep the principle of reflexivity in mind, even when it comes to evaluating a different national research context. Bulgaria is um, quite down the line when it comes to progress currently, um, and it really pains me to say that, but it's true, archaeologically speaking. Funding uh, structures, funding structures are... Um, slam good bureaucratic nonsense and it's quite difficult for regional museums which are the primary research institutions in Bulgaria to get funding and when they do they get very small chunks from municipalities which are the regional uh, heads of regional structures in Bulgaria and when that funding is given to regional museums then it mostly goes towards funding unskilled archaeological labor and I've worked at a few of these digs where you have um, maybe 30 diggers that come to the site and they have absolutely no knowledge of archaeology whatsoever um, and you have maybe two or three archaeologists floating about the site trying to see what's happening at all times but it's incredibly difficult to keep control of, 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 a, of a few hectares of a site when that happens. So of course um, unskilled workers <coughs> means no knowledge of, intricate knowledge of archaeological context so sampling is even out of out of the out of the people's minds when that happens, of course. So um, there's hardly enough skilled excavations to provide um, 
research competence for adequate sampling. When, you know, when research um, excavations are conducted by universities, of course you have uh, undergraduates and postgraduates who attend the excavations and they very happily would dig about and, uh, and, and try and learn stuff. But even when that happens, there's only about two to four universities in the whole of Bulgaria who conduct research like that, and that's hardly enough uh, to uh, really keep in, keep in touch with everything that's happening in the country. So what, um, what I'm also quite aware of whenever I go back to Bulgaria is that the government um, hardly recognizes the necessity for extensive cultural heritage protection. Um, so that's, um, that's a, a photo of, uh, again, a field trip that I took um, a few years ago, it was from 2017 actually, quite, quite um, recently. Um, and I was hunting for Neolithic sites. And this is something that's quite difficult to do in Bulgarian archaeology um, because there's no, there's no signs. No one tells you where these sites are. Someone would write in a very short two-page report, this is a site two kilometers northwest of the center of the village, and you need to go out in that direction and kind of guesswork. So that, that's me guesstimating where one of the biggest and most eponymous site, sites in near early Neolithic sites in Western Bulgaria is. So it's, in that sense, it's quite frustrating, but this is really a very symptomatic thing for Bulgarian, uh, for Bulgarian archaeology, and it's, and I don't think um, it's very easy for, for a British audience to understand the complete lack of engagement with prehistoric cultural heritage in the country. So we can't expect people, um, researchers, uh, to want to direct resources towards establishment of absolute chronology if there's not the public engagement of wanting to know what actually happened uh, in terms of prehistoric chronologies. So there's not that thing that has been uh, so much of a driver in creating absolute chronologies and uh, keeping engaged with the, with the general public in the UK has not been, uh, has not been a, a, a factor in the development of Bulgarian prehistory whatsoever. So really, if we are to understand and refrain from judgment of present day research methodology in Bulgaria, all these things are something that we need to keep in mind. We also need to value that Bulgarian research researchers are in fact doing the best they can with what they have. And in light of this, relative chronologies are somewhat effective and an expensive way to make sense of a big amount of data that's coming in quite, quite quickly and to then uh, incorporate it into some kind of a framework. So really why I'm boring you with this talk on all the problems with Bulgarian prehistory is because once you go past that problem, there's a huge, vast amount of space that's effectively void of post-cultural uh, post historical interpretation, definitely post-processualist uh, post, um, interpretations whatsoever. And that's why it's been so interesting for me to venture into this kind of landscape of unknowns because if I do have the patience to go over all the relative chronologies in the region and actually try and make sense of them uh, and be critical, they don't really seem to be that ludicrous. But the, the vast amount of relative chronologies is quite off-putting when you, when you first see it. When you, but when you actually start looking at the site, it does make sense. So what I want to leave you with is that the whole concept of the session is um, executed in reverse here uh, in my talk. And while there's hardly a major shift towards radiocarbon dating and Bulgarian methodology, my talk doesn't even include the other archaeometric practices that are currently practiced in Bulgaria, so I want you to keep, keep that in mind as well. If British prehistorians are to discover a reinvigorated passion for studying Bulgarian materials, it is, it is indeed important to remain mindful of the points I've made today. We cannot simply expect other countries to catch up with us. Are arrogantly implying that we have established best practices. We need to we need to in some cases recognize that methodological certainties is a category of highly variable value in different countries. 
while we expect to work with the exact <coughs> certainties in practice and method, we can never fully be able to conduct unbiased research in other countries. <coughs> and this is, um, this is a photo of uh, myself in, in the museum of, uh, in Thessaloniki from last summer <coughs> where I'm marveling at this, at this, this plaque pronouncing what the post post-processionalist uh, method is in archaeology, which I found quite refreshing after a long trip in, uh, in, in Bulgaria of uh, zero uh, in engagement with anything um, apart from uh, cultural historical traditions. So um, thank you, and um, sorry if that was too much of a move away from a Britishness, <laughs> but there we go. Thank you.